LA this week. The drive is on to provide professional clothing to homeless LGBT youth. It is a very personal issue for two LA city leaders. I'm Gil Reyes with more on how you can donate. I'm Anna Marcos. Indigenous Day is the thing in LA now, and Columbus Day is a thing of the past. More on that story coming up. 20 weeks of intense training, and these LAFD graduates are ready to hit the ground running. We take you to their graduation. That's next. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yana Kay. A heated and emotional debate as Native Americans in LA fought to rename an important holiday in American history. Anna Marcos has more on the city council vote that has now created Indigenous Peoples Day. The sounds of a powwow echoed through City Hall in honor of the big day. The city council about to vote to strike down Columbus Day and replace it with Indigenous Peoples Day. We need to celebrate the first people of these Americas, the people who are here before anyone else. Christopher Columbus, the explorer of the New World to many Americans, is for Native Americans a symbol of the rape and genocide of their people. Council member Mitch O'Farrell helped champion their cause. We have the spirits behind us. We have history behind us. The council meeting grew heated as pro-Columbus supporters spoke up for their rights. On behalf of the Italian community, we want to celebrate with you. We just don't want it to be at the expense of Columbus Day. I ask that you not create a racial conflict. We have no ethnic animosity toward the Native American people. Christopher Columbus did to the people, I'm sure he wasn't a bad guy, but then politics stepped in. Wait a minute! Shut your mouths! We did a lot for this country, and I think everybody knows that every time they eat spaghetti. How can we, on one hand, support the dignity and human rights of people, while on the other hand, replace one group's social inclusiveness for the sake of another? How is that fair and just? For pro-Indigenous supporters, it was time to right a wrong in history. Um, I stand before you as a Tongva woman. This was my land for 15,000 years prior to any colonization. Um, people came and changed us and tried to erase us. We are people of the sun. We are good stock, made slaves, blood, sweat, tears. The council vote in favor of Indigenous Peoples Day, an almost unanimous yes. We took a step that is righteous, that is just, that is healing. Haishka, Punamia, thank you. Indigenous Day has already become the law of the land in five states and numerous cities, including Berkeley, Albuquerque, Denver, and more. And it could become law in L.A. as early as next year. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. One bright spot for Italian Americans. Starting next year, Columbus Day may no longer exist, but there will be an Italian American Heritage Day each October to celebrate the contributions of that community without mention of Columbus. Turning now to a Los Angeles treasure that's once again shuttling passengers up and down Bunker Hill. As Gil Reyes reports, Angel's Flight is back in business after several stalls and stops. <laughs> No, this is not a Hollywood movie, though its rail cars, Sinai and all of that, have starred in several films, including the Oscar-winning La La Land. Angel's Flight, the world's shortest railroad, and a treasure in downtown's Bunker Hill, really is moving again. All right, success. Mayor Eric Garcetti and downtown council member Jose Huizar took a ride on its grand reopening, the last time it worked was four years ago. I'm sort of like an amateur Los Angeles historian. So when this came back to life, I was so excited. And I'm, I'm late to work just to be here to write it, you know. But it's very important to me. It has been a long ride for this short railway. But today we are confident uh, that we have done this the right way. We have rebuilt this railway in a way that will be safe for passengers, safe for our city, and that will help promote a great Los Angeles. Angel's flight closed in 2013 after a derailed 
derailment left a passenger stranded midway. And in 2001, one of the cars broke loose and slammed into the other car, killing one man and forcing another closure. But local leaders say that's all in the past. Safety upgrades include newer brakes and motors. Also, this walkway connected to the track so passengers can more safely evacuate if needed. It has some jolts at some point, but, but that's part of the charm. That's okay. part of uh, enjoying it as it was in 1901. 1901. That's when the original Angel's Flight opened a block away from its current site. Today, the line connects California Plaza from the top to Hill Street on the bottom, right across from the popular Grand Central Market. Council member Wezar promises more amenities for the area. To provide more housing, more retail, more commercial space. And as we move forward, that in 2040, it's been estimated, we will have 125,000 people living in downtown Los Angeles. We're getting prepared now. And you can take a one-way trip on what's called a little slice of heaven in the city of Angeles for only $1.00. 50 cents with your Metro tap card. Reporting from the newly reopened Angels Flight, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Several private companies helped pay for the line's restoration. One of the private companies and the Angels Flight Railway Foundation will oversee operations over the next 30 years. Well, for some, it's been a lifelong dream. For others, it was a calling. Either way, they came together to celebrate months of hard work, becoming the latest batch to join the LAFD. Rasha Goel has more. 54 graduates are now stepping into their new lives as they become part of the Los Angeles Fire Department. Among them is Joy Montoya, who has wanted to be a firefighter since the age of 12. I became an explorer at Fire Station 27 and um, got hired now at 26 years old. I think this whole experience with, was difficult, but at the same time it was humbling. These graduates had to complete 20 weeks of intense training. We exposed them from everything from ladders to hoses to the policy and procedures of our department. One of the challenges has been getting more female recruits into the Los Angeles Fire Department. Even out of this bunch of 54 today, there is only one female graduate. And we've gone up from about 2.5 to 3%, but that's still too slow. Um, so we're investing in the future. We're starting with girls, uh, with an LAFD girls camp that will plant the seed in middle schoolers and high schoolers to say, hey, this is a career I could pursue. Now we're seeing in this next two classes six women that will be coming the next class, seven after that. You can really do anything you want. Just set your mind to it and really push for it. Don't give up. These graduates certainly did not give up. The graduation is just the beginning as they head into a year of probation. They're not done. This is a significant milestone, though, in the development of their career. One step at a time as they jump into their new careers of tackling some heated moments. Reporting from Panorama City, I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. LAFD graduations occur every 20 weeks at two concurrent drill towers, one in the valley and the other on Terminal Island. Around the world, we've seen how social media can impact elections and influence policy. But to access social media, you'll need computers first. Gil Reyes reports on a plan to use the gift of technology to trigger social change here at home. Are you an activist also? Do you help yeah. South LA activist Nack Birch says his new and free home computer will help get the word out about upcoming elections and so much more. Community activities, outreach to new members, and, uh, and more or less just to keep everybody in the loop. <laughs> He's among 100 people from South L.A. receiving free computers with Wi-Fi, thanks to the Our Cycle L.A. program. Our Cycle takes old City of L.A. office computers and refurbishes them for people in need. The nonprofit group Human IT upgrades the PCs with the latest technology. We've had these Our Cycle giveaways at schools, at senior housing, at transitional housing for the homeless. But this marks the first time at the Community Coalition, a grassroots effort to improve neighborhoods through social organizing. Our members 
can then leverage the internet and social media to then promote their stories, promote their causes, bring attention to the inequity of South Los Angeles. And you know, our families are struggling with uh, going to failing schools. Our, uh, we have an economic divide where we have unemployment and joblessness. Uh, we also real struggle with a foster care system that prepares a lot of people for prison rather than reuniting with their families. You're welcome. Until today, many group members could only do online outreach from here, coalition headquarters. Thank you. But with their new computers, members can also promote social causes from home at any time. South LA Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson is a former community coalition president. And everybody who's a member is an activist, and so whether or not it's looking up the problem property on your block or making sure everything around your neighborhood is up to code or making sure the city or the county is following the rules in your neighborhood and your neighborhood is getting everything it's supposed to, uh, that's going to open up to every family. Over 69% of Americans are active on social media. Over 77% of Americans have smartphones. Digital is the way that people are connecting. To keep tabs on government and influence change. From Community Coalition Headquarters in South Los Angeles, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Council President Herb Wesson and the city's information technology agency came up with the R-Cycle concept two years ago. Since then, the city has given away some 3,000 refurbished computers with Wi-Fi. Well, Latino Heritage Month kicks off in L.A., Latinos are celebrating big. But as Anna Marco shows us, the kickoff party had its serious moments. A grand mariachi welcome as L.A. rang in Latino Heritage Month. With it came a city council proclamation and a call for resistance in the age of Trump and his anti-immigrant policies. We will build our community through unity, through resistance. We will continue to go forward, never backward. We will prevail and we will win. Those who fail to heed our call will do so by placing themselves in peril of their careers. Uh, yo creo que la unidad Unity is the best way to win in this situation. The Avelicas were also in the house. The immigrant family has become the symbol of the L.A. immigrant resistance. Romulo Avelica was arrested by ICE agents in February as he drove his daughters to school and was marked for deportation. But his daughter caught the arrest on her phone and the video sparked protests and a push to fight back in the immigrant community. Romulo is now back with his family. Gracias a Dios, primero estamos aquí. Gracias a toda la comunidad por el apoyo. Thanks to all the community Gracias for the support. Of course I was crying. It was a sad moment. So yeah, I was, we were crying. I felt sad because they were taking away my dad. And um, but now it's it's I feel happy because now his case is a uh, it's it's helping other immigrants. But age of Trump or not, this celebration was also about fun, dance, music, and lots of Mexican food. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we have played such a critical role in the development of the region and of the nation, and we will continue to play that role in the future. And if you missed this special Latino Heritage Month celebration, worry not, there are more parties all month. And now everyone can celebrate every time they hop on a bus or a train with this special Latino Heritage Month Metro Tap Card. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. For more information on events this month, visit latinoheritage.la. Well, is it possible to improve student housing and underserved neighborhoods too? USC may have done both by opening up a mixed-use retail complex for 2,500 students in South LA. Gil Reyes shows us. The Trojan marching band fires up the crowd for the grand opening of USC Village, the biggest development complex in South LA's history. We are talking 15 acres of mixed-use student housing with popular shops for students as well as South LA residents. Sophomore Eden Flynn just moved in. I also live right above the Trader Joe's and I have a kitchen. So it's like whatever I want, I can just kind of, in terms of food, it's pretty, pretty lucky. Math professor Neil Tiruvilu Amala also yeah, lives here. He mentions the convenience of living above retail in a mixed-use setting. 
simple. It's too simple. <laughs> it's too simple. You get up, uh, you walk downstairs, You, if you want to get a cup of coffee, you go to Starbucks. If you want to uh, pick up some breakfast, you go to the, uh, you know, the dining hall. If you need some groceries, you go to Trader Joe's. It's right there. I mean, there's, there's nothing you need to even leave this complex for. Not to mention the state-of-the-art 30,000 square foot fitness center. Now, as part of the development deal, USC has also promised to contribute $20 million to the city of LA's affordable housing trust fund. That means more housing for people of low income. In the immediate area, okay. it's around five miles around the camp, but it's important that it be in this area. The grand opening tops off with the unveiling of the Hecuba Queen of Troy sculpture. She's the female counterpart of USC mascot Tommy Trojan. The statue is also a symbol of USC's commitment to evening the playing field for women, people of color, and the underserved, like many of the residents in South LA. Our neighbors shop just like USC students, and by working together, we were successful in bringing these popular retailers to South LA for the first time. Council member Curran Price says this will translate to more local jobs. He calls USC Village a turning point for the university, South LA, and the city in general. Fight on. I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. USC totally funded the $700 million project and far surpassed its goal of 20% local hires during three years of construction. Remember your last big job interview? You had to dress to impress. But for the homeless, that's difficult. And that includes homeless LGBT youth whose numbers have increased in Hollywood recently. But as Gil Reyes reports, donating unwanted clothes could help them find work. Hollywood Council member Mitch O'Farrell donates some of his stylish threads to the Los Angeles LGBT Center. His contributions could help someone like Andre Vargas land a job. When I first started applying for jobs, I didn't uh, own any professional clothing and I couldn't um, afford to buy any. And that can be a job killer as early as the interview. But the city's openly gay elected leaders are helping, launching a professional clothing drive for the center's homeless and at-risk youth throughout September. The clothing drive led by LA City Controller Ron Galperin. We ask that it be gently used, uh, hopefully stylish. It's a great opportunity to clean out the closet. And for those of you who are cleaning out your closets, that gives you a chance to buy more. City leaders say it's a chance for everybody to come out of the closet to see what they can come up with. Dresses, shirts, jackets, whole suits, shoes, you name it. Anything that can help our homeless LGBT youth find work. We're giving them that one piece of relief that they need so that they can feel good about the way they present themselves to a prospective employer. And you really can't put a price tag on that. An estimated 40% of LA's homeless youth identify themselves as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. The Los Angeles LGBT Center says the number of young people seeking their help has soared over the past year. On top of housing and medical services, the center also helps with resume building, internships, and job placement. We work very closely with the Mayor's Initiative Hire LA's Youth, and I'm very pleased to say that in the last 12 months, over 140 of our young people have gotten employment uh, through that program. Over the past year, Andre Vargas has landed three paid internships. And as he gets ready for the next interview, he has a message for folks who donate. Um, I just want them to know that their gener generosity um, improves and it saves lives, and I'm, I'm, I'm proof of that. At City Hall, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. You can drop off donations at Controller Ron Galperin's office on the third floor of City Hall East, the mayor's help desk at City Hall, also at Councilman Mitchell Farrell's district office at 1722 Sunset Boulevard in Echo Park. A little birthday buzz for the City of Angels as it blew out 236 candles on its birthday cake. Anna Marcos takes us to the party. These Pueblo lovers celebrated L.A.'s birthday by reenacting the nine-mile walk of L.A.'s first pobladores, from the San Gabriel Mission to the El Pueblo de Los Angeles, the last leg of their journey. 
among the hikers, one of the original poblador descendants. It's very important to connect your identity and to find out that we are part of the founding families. Their walk that led them from Sonora and Sinaloa, Mexico, 1,400 miles here to the city of Los Angeles. Others made the trek just for the fun of it. It wasn't too difficult. There was one patch where it was just dirt. It was a little dirt trail, but besides that, it was great. I think it's also really interesting to be able to sort of recreate that history that the Pueblo of Doors did when they founded the city of Los Angeles. Aztec dances and plays about pobladores, also part of the history and the fun of LA's birth story. But LA's grown up a lot since its dusty small town days. It is the metropolis of nearly four million people and a global city with a diverse economy and a diverse populace. Congratulations, City of Los Angeles, for your 236th birthday. You don't look a day over 235. When you celebrate 236 years, of course there's a cake. Here's to another 236 years and more, L.A. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. Both the event and the cake were free. Well, city and county leaders unite in their response to President Trump's administration's decision on DACA. Environmental activists urge city council to support a bill that would make L.A. carbon free by 2045. And a popular park in South L.A. gets a makeover. All these stories in City B. Southland Democratic leaders and immigrant advocates lashed out against the Trump administration's decision to phase out the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, or DACA, which has protected an estimated 800,000 people who were brought to the country as children from deportation. Activists took to the streets throughout L.A. to protest the move, which was announced by Attorney General Jeff Sessions on behalf of President Donald Trump. Congress will be given six months to attempt to pass legislation addressing DACA before it's phased out. L.A. County Supervisors Hilda Solis and Janice Hahn joined Mayor Eric Garcetti in response to the decision. And so we're going to keep being pro-economy, and we're going to keep being pro-security, and we're going to keep being pro-family, because that is what America's about, and it is reflected right here on the streets. City leaders and other environmental activists held a press conference at City Hall in support of Senate Bill 100, which would ensure that California generates 100 percent of its electricity from renewable and carbon-free sources by 2045. SB 100 has passed the state Senate and is now pending before the State Assembly Appropriations Committee. Environmental and health experts are calling for L.A. City Council members to approve a resolution for the city of L.A. to officially support SB 100. The resolution was authored by Council Member Paul Corretz. We have, have some of the most catastrophic uh, climate events and we know this, this is only a prelude to what we'll see in a few decades if we don't dramatically change our direction. The Department of Recreation and Parks and Councilmember Curran Price recently celebrated landscaping improvements at South Los Angeles Wetlands Park. The native plant restoration project was made possible through a $20,000 grant. Located in the South Los Angeles area of the city, South LA Wetlands Park serves nearly 15,000 youth and families living within a one-half mile walking distance and has become a popular location for residents to exercise, enjoy nature and escape the urban environment of the city. The funding was used to replant California native shrubs, trees, and ground cover. Where can you get all the watermelon you can eat, smash, slip around in, and just have a lot of fun with? Where else but the annual watermelon festival in the valley? Anna Marcos takes us to the end of summer party. Bet you never heard of watermelon skiing, but believe it or not, it's a thing. At least, here it is. The big juicy summer fruit is definitely the star of the show at the annual Watermelon Festival. This festival has been going on for 55 years and believe it or not, this celebrates when watermelons were actually a prized crop in the San Fernando Valley 100 years ago. So many uses for watermelon. The big kids get all kinds of games including watermelon cart races. What? You mean you have to go backwards too? 
And then there's this, something that looks a lot like some kind of watermelon hunger games. Of course, others prefer to kick, punch, and smash through all their watermelons in an effort to get in the Guinness Book of World Records like this guy. Well, the first record is the most watermelon smashed in half by a punch. That current record is 70. I'm shooting for 100. And there's watermelon shenanigans for the young kids as well. There's the Melon Dramatic Theater and this Super Bowl fantasy thing that sure looks dreamy, fun, and hard all at the same time. Heck, why not throw in a petting zoo as well? Animals go with watermelons, right? Pigs, goats, llamas, chickens, horses, you name it all part of the summer watermelon fun. I'm really excited to have everything and try some of this really cool watermelon creations that we've seen online and maybe have some of that weird pizza that we saw made of watermelon. Watermelon pizza? Yes, it turns out, besides many other uses, the watermelon is actually quite yummy to eat. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Thinking of going electric? Well, get the answers to all your questions during an electric car event, get a free health screening during a senior health fair, and enjoy the sights and sounds of the San Pedro Festival of the Arts. All this in this week's Things to Do. National Drive Electric Week is a nationwide celebration to raise awareness of today's widespread availability of plug-in vehicles and highlights the benefits of all electric and plug-in hybrid electric cars, trucks, motorcycles, and more. They're fun to drive and are less expensive and more convenient to fuel than gasoline vehicles, which are better for the environment, promote local jobs, and reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Are you considering going electric? Well, here's your chance to talk to some owners who have successfully done so. Come check out the latest in electric cars during the National Drive Electric Week event on Saturday, September 16th. For more, visit driveelectricweek.com. LA Councilmember Mike Bonin is proud to host the Westside Senior Health and Wellness Fair. The fair will feature free screenings, entertainment, giveaways, food, and refreshments. Ample free parking is available in the city parking lot at the northwest corner of Corinth and Iowa. The fair takes place on Saturday, September 16th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at West Los Angeles Civic Center Plaza, located at 1645 Corinth Avenue in West L.A. For more, call 310-575-8461. If you love dance, head over to the 11th Annual San Pedro Festival of the Arts, a free family event featuring dance, music, and crafts. Five years ago, the festival moved to Porto Call Village, helping to draw in thousands of new spectators, performers, and vendors to showcase San Pedro as a center for art and to foster art appreciation. It all takes place on Sunday, September 17th at 11 a.m. at Crafted at the Port of Los Angeles in San Pedro. For more, visit tryartsp.com. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kane from all of us here at LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.